In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve any type of vector problem using a few different strategies. Let's start off with number one, using the tip to tail method to sum up vectors. If you have a pretty simple vector problem that just has vectors along the horizontal direction or the vertical direction, you can just simply use this method and use some addition or subtraction. Now the tip to tail method is basically just drawing one vector and wherever the tip of one ends, then the next one starts, hence the name tip to tail. So it doesn't matter what order you connect them in, as long as you connect them tip to tail, then you're gonna get the correct answer. So let's say for example, we have a vector with a magnitude of four and one of two. Then to find the resultant vector, then we do step number two. It's the beginning of the first vector to the end of the very last one. So it goes from the beginning of this one all the way to the end of this one. And this is just simple addition, four plus two, and the magnitude of that resultant vector would be six. Now, if you have vectors going in opposite directions, it's still the same method where wherever one vector ends, the next one begins. This one is basically just subtraction of vectors and let's say, for example, this downward vector has a magnitude of eight, and then it goes up three. Then our resultant vector goes from the beginning of the first one to the end of the last one. That would leave a magnitude of five for our final resultant vector. Now, when it gets a little bit trickier, we're gonna have to use step number three, if you have a horizontal and vertical vector. So if we have a horizontal vector, and a vertical vector. And let's say this one has a magnitude of three and this one has a magnitude of four. Your resultant vector is gonna be the beginning of your first vector to the end of the very last one. And we're gonna be using two different things. We're gonna be using the Pythagorean theorem and then we're gonna use an inverse trig function just like step number three mentions. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem first, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you're basically just squaring both of your sides to find your hypotenuse. And you're going to sum them up. And 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So we have 25 equals c squared, square root both sides. And then c is going to equal 5. So the magnitude of our resultant vector is five. Now, the reason we would want to use an inverse trig function is to have a direction. So it's, since it's not directly up, down, left, or right, we can't just say up or north or to the right or east. We want to find a direction that's going to be a little bit more descriptive. So we're going to want to find an angle. So that's where the inverse trig function comes into play. So oftentimes I'll use the inverse of tangent but you can really use the inverse of any trig function of SOHCAHTOA. So I'm going to use tangent and I'm going to go to the opposite divided by the adjacent end. So that's the inverse tangent of four over three. And that equals 53.13 degrees. Now, in addition to that, you may want to use a notation at the end of that angle, which would be something like this, 53.13 degrees north of east. So directly east would be this direction, and we're tilting upwards towards the northern end, which is up towards the top of the screen. So that's tilted 53.13 degrees north of east. Now for our final one, let's say, for example, we have multiple different vectors. We have a vertical vector that goes down and then we have a horizontal vector that goes to the right and then we have an angled vector now what we're going to do here is we could do a drawing uh, using the tip to tail method. Uh, for this one, it may not be as applicable in this situation. Um, 
as it is for the first couple where we can basically just directly get an answer, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take any angled vector and break it into its horizontal and vertical components. So we're going to go ahead and draw a horizontal component and we'll just call that the X. And then we're going to draw in a vertical component, which we will call the Y. And then we can use some trig to go ahead and solve for that X and Y component. And then we're going to go ahead and combine all those vectors together to get one final right triangle and a final resultant magnitude. All right, so I went ahead and used sine so that I could use the opposite end and find my y over the hypotenuse and then go ahead and use my known value of five. I multiplied both sides by five to get my vertical vector of 2.5 upwards. I did the same thing for cosine, except I wanted the adjacent side this time to find my horizontal vector. And I got a horizontal vector of 4.33. Now for my final step, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is combine um, both of my horizontal vectors. So I have two to the right and 4.33 to the right. So since they're acting in the same direction, we can go ahead and add those together. Now we're gonna do the same thing for our vertical vectors. We have 2.5 upwards and then we have one down, which are going in exact opposite direction. So I'm gonna take 2.5 minus one and that's only gonna take us upwards 1.5. So then our final resultant vector after adding all three of these together is going to be this purple one over here. And again, we're going to use the same methods we used over here. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and then we're going to use an inverse trig function to find that angle. Okay, so I combined uh, my vectors using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I did 1.5 squared plus 6.33 squared, rounded that off to 42.32 uh, square root of both sides. That left me with a final magnitude of 6.51. I wanted a little bit more of a specific angle. I called that theta for my unknown angle. And again, I used the inverse of tangent, and which is the opposite over the adjacent end. So the inverse tangent of 1.5 divided by 6.33 equals 13.33 degrees. And again, that one happens to be north of east because I'm tilting upwards 13.33 degrees up from east, which is directly to the right. Um, the two examples I showed happen to be north of east, um, but they could be you know, west of south or, or whatever it is, depends on what combination you're looking at. Um, so I hope that was helpful in helping you understand all the different methods. If you have a very simple set of vectors that are all in one direction, go ahead and add or subtract those using the tip to tail method. If you have ones that are in the horizontal and vertical direction, definitely use that Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude that's on an angle. To find that specific angle, use an inverse trig function such as the inverse of tangent. And you may want to use that notation north of east or something along those lines to be more descriptive of your angle. Now, if you have something a little bit more complicated, um, like our final one over here, always take your angled vector, break it into its X and Y components, which you'll normally do a sine and cosine, not every single time, um, but it is pretty common to use sine and cosine, but you're gonna use your trig functions to find those horizontal and vertical components. Now, 
In the end, when you want to draw your final right triangle, we're going to combine all of our horizontal components, which was that 2 and that 4.33, which gave us this final horizontal component of 6.33, and our vertical components of 2.5 upwards and 1 down, which we end up subtracting because they're in opposite directions. That gave us a smaller vector of 1.5 upwards. We connected those tip to tail as usual, drew our resultant vector from the beginning of our first vector to the end of the final one, use the Pythagorean theorem to get 6.51, and again, using that inverse of tangent to find our angle. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and approach any type of vector problem. Thank you for watching and listening.